Hi, second graders. Welcome to station two. And we are going to read how to read a story. You can find this story in your my book on page 127. So you have a couple options. You can turn to your book and follow along with us, or you might just want to read and follow along from the computer screen. But we are on page 127 in your my book. Let's go ahead and get started. So before I even begin reading, I'm going to look at this picture right here. And I want you to look at this picture right here. I see a boy and I see what does he have scattered all around him? He has books scattered all around him. And then I see thought bubbles and I see all different kinds of things like a green monster here, a spaceship here, like a rocket. Um, a sword fighting here. So I see that he's thinking about a whole bunch of different things. So even though I'm not sure exactly what he's doing in this picture, I'm going to look for the details that help me make a smart guess. And I see that he's surrounded by those books and he has those thought bubbles with all those things going on. So what I can infer and make an inference about is that he is looking at all of these books and trying to figure out what book does he exactly want to read? Does he want to read about the green monster? Does he want to read about the person in the rocket or the fox? What does he want to read about? So he's trying to make a decision here. So it says step one, find a good one. It can have princesses and castles if you like that sort of thing or witches and trolls as long as they're not too scary, but you find what you want to read. Then we have step two, find a reading buddy, a good one. A buddy can be older or younger or a person your age or maybe not a person at all. Make sure your reading buddy is nice and snuggly and make sure you both like the book. If you don't agree, go back to step one. Sometimes it takes a few tries just to find the right book. So it says, for step two, it says find a reading buddy, a good one, and a buddy can be older or younger. So there's a difference, though, between reading buddies. Sometimes you might want to find an older one, but sometimes you might want to find a younger one. So, for example, if I found an older buddy, then I know that buddy can help me maybe read the story to me if the book is a little too challenging, help me understand the book better. But... If I choose a younger reading buddy, like if I was to maybe pick my little three-year-old niece as my reading buddy, then I would be reading the book to her. So you do different things depending on the buddy that you pick. Step three, find a cozy reading spot. Outside is fun, but not if it's very cold, unless you have thick woolen blankets and hats and scarves and cups of steaming hot cocoa. And not if it's very hot, unless you have trees to shade you from the sun, a hammock to catch cool breezes and tall glasses of icy lemonade. Inside is good, couches are cozy, so are chairs big enough for two. Just be careful not to get stuck. Step four, look at the book's cover. Can you guess what it's about? Read the title, that might be a clue. We're going to pause here in just a second. And I, in just a minute, I want you to pause the video and in your reading notebook, I want you to answer this question for me. So turn to the very next blank page in your reading notebook. And I want you to answer this question. Why is this step so important? So step four says, Look at the book's cover. Can you guess what it's about? Read the title. That might be a clue. So why is step four important, looking at the book's cover? Why is it important to look at a book's cover when you're getting ready to read? Go ahead and pause this video and answer that question in your notebook. All right. 
I hope you have your answer in your notebook. Did you say something about looking at the book's cover helps you predict what the book or story will be about before you begin to read it? That kind of gives you a purpose for reading and it helps you decide if it's really a book you want to read. For example, if I choose a book off the shelf, I'm gonna look at that cover. I might even open and peek in, but that cover is going to help me decide if this is something I'm interested in. And yes, we all have heard the saying, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but I can help it. It can help me like for topics and things. So for example, Miss Huff really isn't into learning about robots and that kind of thing. So am I going to really want to read a story for fun about robots? Probably not. So the cover can definitely help you. Step five, <coughs> open the book. This is the exciting part. Read the story in a loud, clear voice, not too slow and not too fast. You can point to words if you like, but you don't have to do that. Once upon a time. Step six. When the characters talk, whatever's being said, say it in a voice to match who's talking. I will save the kingdom. I am the most powerful in all the land. I'm hungry for lunch. Soon the castle will be mine. Beep. No matter, or oh, step seven, no matter what you read, hold the book so your buddy can see the pictures. Buddies get impatient when they can't see it well. Step eight. If there are words you don't know, try sounding them out or looking at the pictures to see what makes sense. They were afraid the dragon would burn down the cast, cast. Oh, look at the picture. The castle. If you need a break, you can pause for a minute and talk to your reading buddy to predict what might happen next. Will the castle catch on fire? Will the princess tame the dragon? Will the robot marry the princess? Will the horse make friends with the dragon? Will the dragon eat them all for lunch? So remember, you definitely wanna ask questions while you read. All right, so let's look right here. What are the boy and the dog doing in this picture? Right here, what are the boy and the dog doing in this picture? You don't need to respond in your notebook, just think about it for a second. I think the boy and the dog are talking about the story and trying to think about what might happen next. And I think the dog might even be shocked about what the boy is saying, right? If you have a pet, do you ever talk to your pet? Of course we do. Pets can be good reading buddies too. Step nine. When you get to the exciting parts, make your voice sound exciting too. Who dares disturb me in my cave? The dragon growled. Oh dear, oh no! The robot was so scared, all his metal parts rattled. What would they do? But the princess tackled that dragon and held him down. You must promise you'll never leave. Or you must promise you'll leave our kingdom in peace. When you and your buddy can't stand it a second longer, turn the page to read how things work. Or see how they work out. Step 10. When the book is over, say the end. And then if it was a really good story, go right back to the beginning and start all over again. Because we can read books more than once, especially books that we love. All right, you are going to respond to one more question in your reading notebook for me. So you can just, you don't need to go to a new page, just skip a couple lines from where you wrote your last answer. And I want you to describe a time when you loved a story so much 
that you wanted to read it again right away. Or maybe it was a story that you just wanted to read over and over and over. It can be something that you have read yourself, or it can be a story that has been read to you. Maybe something that was read to you in school or a bedtime story. So again, I want you to describe a time when you loved a story so much you wanted to read it again right away or you wanted to read it over and over and over again. Tell me the book, tell me the title, and tell me a little bit about what the book was about. I want you to write that in your notebook. And when you are finished, you can move on to station three. Bye!